Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So, before I start talking about blockchain, I would like to tease you a little bit with some figures. Amazing figures, isn't it? So, let me tell you what they mean for us at Airbus. Every six hours, an Airbus aircraft is delivered. If you do the math, it means that we deliver around 718 aircraft per year at current production rate. 1.5 million. A single air aircraft, a small aircraft like A320, comprises of 1.5 million elementary parts. And 70 to 80 percent of those parts are provided to us by suppliers. So we work with 7,700 suppliers. We process 3 million invoices per year. But our job is not done when we deliver the aircraft. As of January 2018, almost 10,000 Airbus aircraft are flying in the world. And that they are operated by 400 operators across the globe, to which we give support 24-7. And when you know that an aircraft like A350, a big aircraft that you might take to go from Europe to the Middle East, can send up to 40,000 parameters to the ground when flying during just one flight. It's a lot of data. And this number is going to increase in the future as our fleet is increasing. So now that you have a little bit of flavor of what is Airbus, what we're doing, it's amazing. Amazing number of figures. Can you imagine the number of interfaces, people, interactions, suppliers? It's a lot of data, big data. And data management is not an option today for big players like us. It is a strategic asset for the company. And wait a second, aren't we already talking about the blockchain environment? I think we do. We have the breeding ground for blockchain here. So before I jump into blockchain, what we are doing to tell you what we are doing in blockchain at Airbus, let me tell you more a little bit about our ecosystem. Airbus, in fact, we are three divisions. We produce commercial aircraft, it's the most famous one, but we also do helicopters and we have a division for defense in space. We are a big player in aerospace industry and we work all together on blockchain. Aviation. Why aviation? I'm from Airbus commercial aircraft, so it's what I know best. Just have a look at the figure on the top right side of this slide. Air traffic doubles every 15 years. If we do stupid math with the figures I just showed you, we can imagine that those figures are going to double in the, in the years to come. But no. We think that they will grow exponentially. With IoT technology, for instance, we know that those figures will not just double. It's great for our future blockchain platform. We need to take that into account. We also need to take into account that we are a global player. We are everywhere in the world, like our customers, our suppliers, it's an opportunity for our blockchain, but it's also challenging. When you know that we are in a very highly regulated uh, environment, regulation is really important in the aerospace industry. So it's challenging for us. It's an opportunity, but it's also a challenge. But we're confident because innovation is part of our DNA. Like, like our founding fathers, we are risk takers. We set the standards in the industry. 
who are not afraid of changes. We set the standard. Remember, for instance, the fly-by-wire? <coughs> we were the first one to put that on um, commercial aircraft. But we're not blinded by our success. Even if we have the most successful aircraft family in aviation history with the 8320 family, we are not dazzled, no. We like innovation. We like innovating. And guess what? Our next challenge we want to embrace is blockchain. Our strategy, start small and then scale up. What does it mean? It means that we are not going to change our SAP system by blockchain tomorrow. Too risky for our operations, our suppliers, our customers. No, we will start small, with small applications that are standalone, applications that are not strategic for our operations. So, what did we do the past two years? Because we started investigating, investigating blockchain two years ago. We started by assessing and understanding the technology and defining whether it's useful for our business. And yes, it is. So then we went to the business. Are the department at Airbus group-wide to define use cases? And we identified plus more, more than 50 use cases with them. Then to confirm feasibility and platform choices, we did rapid prototyping. We chose eight use cases for which we developed proof of concepts. And it demonstrated value. I will give you an example later on of a, um, a use case. But we keep on moving and we keep on assessing the technology, the environment and also the platforms. We did a platform comparison of the main platforms in the market so that we know when somebody comes with a use case which platform is more suitable which platform had the best features for this use case. And our ambition is to grow up our internal skills first. And then also with our strategic partners to build ambitious platform for aviation industry. During the past two years, our experience enabled us to identify opportunities, five opportunities in engineering to optimize the process with digital twin, for instance, we believe that blockchain technology could help digital twin. What is digital twin? It's the dynamic software model of a physical thing and how to track all the changes that can happen to an aircraft throughout its life cycle, the changes in its configuration, how to enable Airbus, the Emerald, the airline to have access to those changes live with blockchain. We will mirror those changes in the blockchain. Same for manufacturing and quality with digital thread. We believe that blockchain will be a key enabler for digital thread. Those two are complementary, digital twin and digital thread. They are the holy grail for industrial companies. And for instance, we, blockchain will enable to have, today an, an airline for instance, don't have all the visibility of what is done on its aircraft when they are at MRO. MRO is maintain, maintain, sorry, repair overall. It's like the garage for your car. They repair and maintain the aircraft. Airline or even others don't have access to all the data. Everything that is performed on the aircraft during maintenance and repair is on the MRO systems. We believe that with blockchain, if we can mirror this information, everyone will have access to those information live. And it's a good thing. It's revolutionary for airline, for instance. Why? Because if they have access to those data, they don't need to ask the MRO. And if you want to switch MRO, it's easier. 
supply chain tracking. We think that the combination of blockchain and, for instance, technology like Intelligent Inc. will enable us to fight counterfeiting because counterfeiting exists in aerospace industry as well, not only in luxury industry, not only in automotive. We also have counterfeiting in aerospace. Today, if you put an RFID tag, it can be removed from the spare, from the part. In ink, you cannot scrub it. So intelligent ink will contain historical data of the spare of the part. All the historical data of the, of the part will be embedded in that part, in that sphere. And guess what? All this data could be mirrored to blockchain. So, giving everyone, Airbus, the airline, the Emerald, the OEM, access in instantly to the same information, to historical data. A revolution. Identity and data integrity. I will give you an example of one use case that we developed and we are conducting a trial on it prior to go to production this year. But let me give you an, an example. 3D printing. Let's imagine that tomorrow we will have more and more 3D printed parts on board aircraft. I'm an airline. I have an aircraft on the ground in Australia. The spare part is not available in Australia. I ring Airbus or another OEM so that I get the part. It will take two days to have a part in Australia. It's so costly for the airline to have an aircraft on ground. So let's imagine that tomorrow I can 3D print the part, the missing part. So Airbus or the OEM send the file to the MRO or to the airline in Australia so that they can print that part. What about if this file is corrupted in between. We believe that with blockchain, with hashing functionality, you will be able to check, okay, I send this file, the hashing that correspond to the exact number of words, characters embedded in this file is the same as the airline or the MRO will receive. So we are safe. Finally, the best use case. The easiest one, because blockchain first application is finance, is procure-to-pay process. I will, de I will detail it later on. So now that you know what are the arrays we are focusing on, you might be wondering, okay, when you have a use case, how do you determine that it's a good candidate for blockchain? We determined five blockchain drivers. And we say that if a use case falls into several of those drivers, it's a good candidate. But not at all the time. It's a potential good candidate. So what are they? And then I will give you an example with Procure to Pay. Easy example to understand. So when you have a setup where you have multiple parties sharing data, and those data needs to be audited. And we are in a very highly regulated environment, so everything needs to be audited. And when interactions are time sensitive and reconciliation of data is costly, leading to a high cost of trust, sorry, we have all the conditions for blockchain, to implement blockchain. Let me give you a quick example. I'm Airbus and I order items to my supplier. I order five. My supplier officer records in SAP that he received just three. But my accounting department received a bill for five. And then I call my supplier and I ask, ask him, but I ordered five. Why did you send me just three and you bill me five? And he tells me, no, I sent you five. Who's got the truth? Maybe it's the transportation company that lost two of the items or forgot to deliver them. So I'm right, my supplier is right, but we don't have a common view of what happened. So if we put all those transactions in blockchain, we all will be synchronized. 
Let me give you another example that we will uh, put on production hopefully this year. Pilot flight certificate. So we're saying that we have a growing fleet. You saw, you saw the figures, the fleet is increasing, doubling every 15 years. So there, is an increase, there will be an increase of demand for pilot training. We forecast that in the 20 years to come, we will have to train 500,000 pilots. But today the process is manual, mainly manual. And the pilot certificates are paper-based, not just at Airbus, everywhere. Every training company has the same process. But those certificates need to be audited by authorities. So what we intend to do is to put those certificates after they are signed by our head of training into the blockchain. We are providing then to airlines and authorities and to ourselves also an instant view of the certificate so that we can verify the authenticity of the certificate and its validity as well because they expire at some times. So we developed a proof of concept last year on that and it was validated by the business and so this year we are conducting trial prior to moving to production. So our two years of experimenting, prototyping, enabled us to highlight challenges. We have identified six main challenges. For sure they are not specific to Airbus. For sure they are <coughs> valid in other industry. First one is business case and return on investment. Nobody really knows how much a blockchain platform with a large scale like the one we want to put in place costs. We, we don't have, the, the technology is not mature enough to know what will be the return on investment, how much it will cost to maintain a large scale blockchain platform. Scalability and robustness. As you saw, we are, global, we are a global player. We don't know if we can implement a so large scale blockchain platform. Robustness. Today we are sending, okay, data. What about if tomorrow, with, for instance, our flight certificate, we want to put the pilot's picture? Maybe regulation will apply to us to put the pilot's picture. Is the blockchain platform robust enough to handle that? We don't know. Confidentiality. Blockchain is a distributed database. Even if in our setting we are talking about a permissioned, a private blockchain, how do we know that all the participants will have access to only the right data and will not access data that we don't want them to access? Because we are in an industry where there is a lot of competition and where people want to keep their own data safe. What about regulation? Today we know the status of regulation. We will have in May new rules with European GDPR, but what about in five years, in 10 years from now, what will be the regulation? We will build our blockchain platform with current regulation. And we know that when we put data in the blockchain, it's forever. Data are immutable. So what about if today regulation tells us you're not, you're not allowed to put this data on the blockchain. Not everyone has got the right to access those data. What about integration with legacy systems? We've got big ACP system, big ERPs. How do we connect them with blockchain platform? Question mark. Interoperability of blockchain platforms. We are testing several blockchain platforms because they have different features. So maybe we will have different blockchain platforms implemented at Airbus. How do we connect them? We don't know. Some players are investigating the question today, but we don't have the answer yet. 
What about blowout with partners and governments? They, if we don't have partners, if we don't have other um, key uh, strategic partners in the blockchain, it's useless to have a blockchain. It's just a database. So we need to build consortium with our key strategic partners. But our blockchain participants will grow, grow in the future. How do we decide who is allowed to enter this blockchain? And who is allowed to take the decision? We have to, to take this into account from the beginning. We need to set up a strong governance. So I think now you are seeing how complex is blockchain environment, how complex it is to set up a blockchain platform at large industrial scale. So we think that we need teams with diverse set of skills, with a large set of skills. And this leads me to the last part of my presentation that is about diversity. Diversity at others. <coughs> it's not just a buzzword. We really take that seriously at others. And we have a dedicated team working in inclusion and diversity. Why? Because we need to change mentality and they are here to accelerate the process. It's not just us at Abbott who say that diversity is a good thing. It's statistically proven that a company with more diversity is more competitive. Diversity <coughs> equals higher level of innovation. It equals collective performance and it gives a high sense of belonging to employees. So it serves the company at all level. So how do we do to attract people with different background? When I say different background, it's experiences, it's gender, religion, nationality, sexual orientation. How do we attract, do we attract those people? How do we develop them and how to retain them? <coughs> we think that to attract more women, but not only, we need to promote our business outside. We need to promote our careers during career fairs, conferences, but also we need to speak to young people. Here in Germany, we know that we participate to Girls Day, for instance so that young women know what we are doing and, they, and then maybe engage in an engineering career path. We sponsor a, a great number of external associations in France, in the UK and in Germany as well to attract more people. And internally it's the same. Abbott would like to promote more women to executive levels. So, through develop, in development programs, trainings, we are trying to achieve that. But diversity, inclusion, is not just a woman thing. Everyone in the company has to be sensible to this topic. So this is why we have specific trainings and conference to raise global awareness in the whole company. So I'm reaching the end of my presentation, so let me conclude. What we've seen today is that Abbott's ecosystem is, the, is a great breeding ground for blockchain. It's complex, a lot of external <coughs> parties are exchanging data, and this number of data is going to increase. We are in an environment that is where data needs to be audited and tracked. We have identified five key areas, strategic areas, where blockchain could apply and be revolutionary for our industry. But meanwhile, now that we are entering the productive um, stage, we have identified really huge 
challenges, and we're not sure that they are specific to ever. <laughs> but we think that the diversity of profiles, like the one we have in our team at Airbus, at our blockchain team, we can tackle this issue. We can tackle the problem, the complexity of blockchain. And with diversity of profile, of mindset, of background, of way of thinking, we know that we can get the best out of blockchain technology. Blockchain needs everyone. Thank you. <laughs>